another video this is the love and marriage hunts field video uh video the return of the whitlow 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 how can you go um and it's uh episode four season uh season four episode 16 um anyway um y'all it's a lot but it was kind of boring but it wasn't kind of boring it it, it was okay um, and uh, before we get started, remember all things on this channel is alleged in my opinion. It is for learning, teaching. It is for sheer entertainment. Okay, you guys. So it starts off where it left off, and it left off with Mel at the opening of the new stadium in Huntsville. She was the opening act, and she was the commencement announcer of all everything that was going on. Um, it showed Martell and the kiddos coming and she was very shocked that Martell came um, and Martell's confessional said that you know he um, hadn't talked to Mel he needed to know what was going on and you know how to uh, they need to talk about the children okay um, anyway he walks in she's very surprised Miss Van is there um, he comes in, he's looking at her child, the, the gleam, he looked so like he was defeated, child, he looked like he wanted to cry and say, look at this woman, why did I mess up, Lord, why, I mean, you can say what you want, but the eyes don't lie, okay, the man still loves that lady, that's why he gives her hell, okay, um, he still loves her, and I'm gonna tell you, people that love you or that they are pretend like they hate you they'll say everything to hurt you because they still hurt okay um anyway they were talking she he said um i hadn't seen you in a while i he said i had the children i wanted to bring them to support you you know you're their mother and i wanted them to see you know you work and she was like she appreciate that he said he was just asking her um he was just asking her you know so this is uh the grand opening she was explaining yes and he said congratulations gave her a dab and blah blah this and you know okay uh mel said in her confessional you know he stayed in his lane and she was impressed by it okay but for how long <laughs> not long <laughs> But anyway, it goes on from that, and it shows the couples going to the uh, couples retreat that Dr. Francis um, had uh, made for Tisha, and, um, and she invited everyone. Now, Tisha hadn't told Marcel that this was a couples retreat with Dr. Francis to work on their marriage. She just said it's a couples weekend. Now, you guys... If you got to lie to your man or your husband, significant other, whoever's uh, in your life that you love, to get them to go on a trip to better themselves in your marriage, in your union, then what is the purpose of being together? Okay? Um, I feel like Tisha, both of them manipulate one another into doing things they want to do. Um, and they're okay with that okay they're okay with each other because technically if from my observation Marcel and Tisha are one of the same to me you know that's just like Martell and Coleslaw they're one of the same one just got hair and the other one don't one got a wangalane and the other one got a labia that's it of the JJ um but they're one in the same 
And so anyway, um, they're all there. They're all getting together. Um, and Tisha and Marso are not there yet. So Kimmy calls and Dr. Francis wants to know what's going on. And <clears throat> she's called and told Tisha, she said, everyone's here. Where are you guys? And she said, we are here. She said, well, Dr. Francis waiting on you. You can hear Marso, what? Dr. Francis in? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Marso, y'all, y'all can say what you want about Marso, and I told you guys I like Marso, okay? But I like Marso because Marso has been consistently the same, all right? And that's why. I mean, he's just who he is. Uh, he's funny at times. I like it because he can give Miss Wanda the the get down when she needed. And uh, Marso probably, if he owned this ish, he can probably be a a, a good you know a good um television person but anyway um so they are on the way they get there and tisha is just upset uh she finds out that one of her best friends has passed away one of her college friends i felt for her I am praying for her and the family as well. Nobody deserves that. And, you know, I'm glad that Marceau was there. He was, you know, comforting her like a husband should. And that's all. Oh, God, I can't imagine losing one of my sister friends like that. So I, I do feel for you, Tisha. I understand. And I hope you get through this. Okay? It's a lot going on. And regardless of what how I think they are on the show, I don't know them personally. I just go by commentary what I see on the show okay and what I see on the show and who they really are could be two different things but that's why I have an issue because what I want to see on the show is who you really are and this is a person that I finally got to see Tisha hurt which I don't want to see her hurt but I saw some realness for once okay and that's what the show is about if they can get that mentality then they will be all right but they don't get it. They don't understand it. We need reality. We need real from you guys. We don't need the fakeness, okay? Um, so anyway, um, and Dr. Francis saw that she was upset, found out what was going on and all that. So next it goes to Marlene and Martell picking the kiddos up from school. Marlene looked like she don't have a whole bottle of IMS at 2 o'clock in the evening. I'm telling you, Marlene, whole face look drunk. She like, yeah, yeah, it's done. yeah. I mean, Miss Marlene must throw them back, baby, because she look drunk all the time. I'm just here to tell y'all. I mean, if you don't like it, hey, hey, hey bye, bye, bye. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, they were talking about Mel. Um, uh, Martel was telling her before they picked the kiddos up um, that you know he took the kids to see Mel even though it was this weekend Martel you always have an agenda a motive for everything you try to make it seem like well when I had my book signing you wouldn't even um, bring the kids to my book signing but yet you didn't acknowledge the simple fact that Mel had a death in the family okay this is the kind of stuff that gets on my nerves no accountability and then Marlene she does not hold her son accountable for anything she needs to hold Martell accountable but they're one and the same she his ways are just like hers um to me I think you know I think she like Mel but Mel no longer serves a purpose to her and she's just gonna take her son's um take our son's side and you know uh production did flashback and show Marlene throwing shade at Miss Van yeah talk about she does have a life a life of drinking that I miss wine baby drink that wine I miss that I miss wine honey anywho um she enables Martel by not holding him accountable by not telling him the truth but I'm beginning to believe these people don't know what truth is, you know, unless it's somebody they can use. And it's sad, but it's who they are. Um, so Martel, yes, he's wanting to say with his mother. And I see, you know, he has his mother and his father, Gene. Is there any hope? Of course. But 
how, how is he going to be helped when he don't want it? Both of them are leeches. Sorry, but not sorry. Um, anyway, um, it goes back to um, uh, let's see. It goes back. Y'all never, y'all know I don't never go in, in order. So it goes back to I'm gonna go back to Dr. Francis and the um, them at the retreat. Okay. Um, it goes back and Tiffany. I'm sorry, guys. Tiffany tells everyone this is before let me go back this is before uh, Marcel and Tisha uh, actually arrived so Tiffany goes and tells everyone that she has to take a call and that she uh, she could not reschedule the call bull crap um, that um, she needed to take this call right then and she left out no apologies no nothing abruptly do what she want to do didn't care what nobody else think or anything not even her own husband okay and she goes out and dr francis was like okay we're gonna get started and the first word he writes on the board is commitment um and he was saying lewis lou 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 baby boo baby lou Big Lou, Big Lou, Big Lou, Big Lou, Big Lou. He said, so you saying that me and my wife are not committed to this? And he's like, yeah, pretty much. She's in there on the phone and you said nothing. You you didn't hold her accountable for any of this. He said, but I'm here and accountable. But that's not, that's not what he's talking about, Lou. Big Lou. He talking about both of you need to be committed to making your marriage better. But these two don't think they have a problem in their marriage and they are the problem. Okay, Tiffany, she's controlling. She wants to hold on to everything. She wants to make all the decisions. She wants to do whatever she wants to do. Big Lou scared that she gonna walk out so he just accommodate her to keep her mouth shut. And, um, and he just holds on because he doesn't want to go through another divorce. And but yet, they don't see no issues in their marriage. They're all jacked up. You're messed up. You need to listen to somebody who has experience. Y'all know been divorced. Dr. Francis has it. Okay. So, do what you need to do. Listen. They, 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 ugh, they delusional. But anyway, so uh, they talk and then Kimmy was like, um, I thought this is what we were here for. She was like, I thought we were here to work on our marriage and that, you know, we committed to this time and it seems like you guys don't want to commit, you know. And so Big Lou gets up and goes back there and talks to Tiffany and she was like, he was like, you know, they're waiting on you to come back out. He's like, well, Tiffany's like, well, is uh, Marceau and Tisha there? What the hell did that got to do with you? That ain't got nothing to do with you. You committed to this and your big head self need to be in there listening. Okay? Tiffany, you don't... Oh, girl. I don't know what to say. I don't... I, mm, anyway, I'm going to get to you. Um, so, it goes off. And next it shows Mel and uh, my girl, Stormy. You know, y'all know I love Stormy. In her peace room which is so nice and yeah i didn't you know i'm not into all this uh energy and uh i mean not energy the chakras i don't know nothing about that i didn't think um uh you know uh stormy would be into that but hey she has a peace room she has all these now the sounds do sound good y'all that's so relaxing i'm not gonna lie to you when she did that bowl i was like oh it's like my whole body relaxed. So, I don't know. Maybe it's some vibrations that do, you know, y'all have to show me and tell me about it because I don't know all this stuff. And um, she was talking to Mel how everything is going. Mel was telling her that uh, Martell uh, actually brought the kids to the event. She said she was pleased because Martell didn't stay long. He actually stayed within his boundaries. He didn't um, cross the boundaries. He wished the luck and he left. And she was like, oh. And um, she was talking about Merlene. Um, 
Well, Stormy asked about how close are you and Miss Merlene. She said at the end of the day, that is his mother. Um, that is not my mother. Um, and I will be cordial. I will be respectful. But I don't have to. I don't owe her anything, which is true. She don't owe her anything. You know, um, at the end of the day, that is Martell's mom. That is uh, her children's grandmother. And be respectful and um, be cordial is what all she owes Marlene. She don't owe Marlene anything. And um, I hate to say it, but it's true. She don't owe. She was in her season. She's out of season now. Okay? Martell is out of season. He's out and he's going to stay out. He's one of them fruits that made it for a season. And now he's done. He dried up. And this man is so mad because every time he see Mel, he wants to knock himself out because he still can't believe this woman walked away from him. This woman gave up on him. This woman left him. And that's why he's so mad. And he's hurt because he messed up his own life. He had a good life. And you would think, of course, you would think Martell will go to Dr. Francis and try to say there's something wrong with me why would i give up this beautiful family for somebody that don't have nothing somebody that depends on me because you are a narcissist but that's why because when you slept with slaw you saw an opportunity in the beginning to just do what you need to do i'll pay you a little bit of money um, come sleep with you a little bit but that's all it should be don't you ever contact you didn't lay the boundaries you didn't lay the rules down. And you, you, and you say the first time you ever contact my wife, it will be, I don't know you. The first time you ever do anything that um, um, jeopardizes my family, I don't know you. And I will claim to not know you from here on out. He didn't lay the rules down. And this helper thinks she's actually the um, wife. That's why she asked the way she did. She thought she was the wife. You was just a side chick. That's what kills me, okay? Woo, child. Anyway, so the admiration, the love he still has for Mel, he's just mad because this woman broke it off and ain't trying to see him or hear it back, okay? And I don't blame him. You served your purpose to her. It's done, all right? Um, so, um... And then, you know, uh, Stormy was like, uh, in her confessional, she says she has a peace room because um, when she has a stressful day, she needs to unwind. She needs to uh, decompress. You guys, I get that. Working in nursing, whoo, child. My peace is I get in my car, I turn everything on, and I just sit there for a minute. And I pray, and I'll get it out of my system and I go home I take a shower it's quiet I don't have to hear noise I don't and my he don't get it I don't want to hear any noise after hearing people cry all day ringing and dinging and bells and whistles and phones and all that you just want to get your peace back okay because your peace has been interrupted so I get what Stormy is saying um, so we go back to the couple's trip. The couple's trip, they're doing an exercise where Dr. Francis actually ties one leg to the other and, um, and the other leg is free. So the leg tied to each other is the, is the marriage, how they move together, how they should be in sync. And the leg that is free represents the independence of that person in the marriage. Uh, Marceau and um, Tisha does great. They're very in sync. They know how to move together because I'm here to tell you they know each other. And they are in sync with each other because they have concocted and made a plan to always protect each other. And that's point blank. She's going to protect Marceau and Marceau is going to protect her. But in a joking way, he'll let you know what she's doing. At point blank, period. I was impressed with them um, working together, but they that's who they are. They work together. Uh, even though their marriage is a sham and a mess, <laughs> they work together. The love that Tisha has for Marceau 
you can see it every time she look at she loves that man uh, girl she loves she, it's almost like a little giddy teenager again um she loves him and he knows that and he knows she's never going anywhere um anyway and it you know kimmy and uh maurice are having a time kimmy wants her independence maurice is trying to hold her tight she wants them to let go and she, he's trying to you know accommodate her and he, he it's just not working tiffany you know she don't want to put in the work lou trying to work with her and she wants lou to hold her okay and it's just not working and so they go back they prepare for dinner and they break down what was going on y'all i get the exercise i love the exercise because maurice is always trying to control kimmy kimmy is an independent spirit she's the she's not dependent on him or anyone else as you can see she is a go-getter like male that's why her and Mel can get along. And even when they don't get along, Mel and uh, Kimmy can talk because both of them are go-getters. Maurice wants to control Kimmy. He wants her to stop nursing. He wants her to be 100% in real estate. And because he see the potential that she can make money and um, he wants that. It's not because he loves her or anything like that. It's the fact that she's a go-getter and he's lazy. Um, Tisha and Marceau are in sync because they know what each other want and they have agreed on a lot of things. If you go back to the beginning of this whole thing, um, it was an agreement that Marceau and Tisha, Tisha would stay at home and he would work and to be a mother. And uh, they have a lot of agreements and they have a lot of uh, independence. So now that they are in agreement that Tisha, he realizes that Tisha does have a lot of book smarts, not street smart, <laughs> book smarts that, you know, okay, we can work with this. We can make more money like this. She know how to work these books. She know how to pull the money in. So that's why they get along and that's why they are in sync with one another because they understand each other and they complement one another. Uh, Big Lou, <coughs> uh, uh, Big Lou, trying to hold on to Tiffany. Tiffany don't want to be held on to. She want to be let go. Um, Big Lou wants to carry her, and Tiffany don't want to be carried. Tiffany wants a baby. They this said um, we're gonna go to uh, straight into the dinner. Um, Dr. Francis told her, you know, the reason why you want a baby could it be because everything or everybody in your that you love from the time you were born was a loss your dad your mother mother was a loss you were um adopted then you got married and then your husband was a loss he died um and um she got very emotional because that triggered her and it's true she said she never thought of it as losses but it was very hurtful to hear that um he told lou he said uh he don't know if lou was actually trying to pick up Tiffany because he wanted to protect her or he didn't want to hear her mouth. Personally, I think he didn't want to hear her mouth. Uh, I think Lou put up with Tiffany because he just does not want to be alone again. I think Lou puts up tip with Tiffany because um, Tiffany mouth can get out of hand and he just doesn't want to hear it. But before he divorces again, he'll put up with it. And so this is the problem that they have, okay? And it ends there. So you guys, you guys tell me what you think about this review. Um, do you think um, it was on point? It was good. I mean, I learned a lot about the couples and you know, it's nothing new about Tiffany and Lewis. And my thing of it with Kimmy, she called him out, she said, Y'all can seem to give advice, but when people are trying to tell you something, y'all don't want to listen. It's like y'all turn your ear to it, and you should be listening to it. And she's right. They're not listening, but they want to tell everybody about their marriage. Lou, he reads a lot of philo uh, philosophical books because he thinks he's a uh, Pluto or, or uh, you know, one of these phil philosophers or, you know, and, but philosophy only works if you got the experience in it 
you don't have their spirits and you can't tell um, anybody else how to uh, go through their marriage when you don't have a one failed marriage and this marriage is not even seasoned enough to even tell because you don't even know your wife and she don't know you she just know what she wanted from you okay um it just tells a lot it tells a lot uh so anyway you guys remember all things on this channel is alleged please hit the like button share this um video please um uh share and and get everyone if one each one no one subscribe okay and um i will be back later with more commentary Thank you guys for listening. Welcome to the new subscribers. All my uh, information is down below in the subscription box, description box. And if you want to give to the channel, you can. There is a um, there is a uh, heart uh, super chat button, um, cash out, or anything you want to do. Um, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I will be back later. Bye, you guys.